Moving on, the wife of Pennsylvania Lieutenant Governor and Democratic Senate candidate John Fetterman is demanding an apology from NBC News after one of the network's reporters had the gall to comment on Fetterman's ability, or lack thereof, to engage in small talk prior to a sit-down interview. Fetterman has made no secret of his impaired auditory abilities following a stroke in May. He said as much during his appearance with NBC's Dasha Burns during his first in-person interview since the stroke. What has that recovery process been like? How has it changed your day-to-day -day experience? The, the, it's, it's everything. It changes everything. Yeah. Everything about it has changed. Basically having a conversation with your wife to having a conversation with your children. Just, you know, things, uh, especially early after the stroke, um, the ability to really understand it, what exactly what I'm being heard is, but it gets much, much better where I, I take in a lot. But to be precise, I use captioning. So that's really the major, uh, excuse me, that's the major uh, challenge. But this is what Burns said that lit up the left-wing media and now has infuriated Fetterman's wife, Giselle. I'll say, Katie, that just in some of the small talk prior to uh, the interview, before the closed captioning was up and running, it did seem that uh, he had a hard time understanding our, our conversation. Burns dared to report her observation that Fetterman had a hard time following small talk before the interview without the use of closed captioning monitor, which the network had made accommodations for him to use during the sit-down. Speaking to The Independent, Giselle Fetterman called the NBC correspondent's comments, quote, openly ableist, and quote, if this happened in a school, if this was a child that was ableist towards another child or a teacher, there would have been issues stated, there would have been new training done. What? This isn't a school? We aren't talking about kids. This is a campaign for election to one of the highest offices in the country. And you want to guarantee he loses the election? Keep using phrases like ableist. Now, I'm surprised she wants to go there. But I'm not surprised that it set the left-leaning media into an absolute frenzy, calling Burns lazy, discriminatory, and attempts by Burns to defend herself as, quote, absolute hot garbage to double down on this. The perception delivered with the question is that voters should be concerned a candidate is hearing impaired. That's 100 percent ableism. They're saying journalists have to be so politically correct that even merely mentioning the fact that a sitting lieutenant governor and candidate for Senate suffers from lingering medical issues following a sudden stroke during the run-up to the general election is discriminatory and inappropriate. Now, of course reporters should report on what they see and hear. There, or in this case, she is the eyes of the viewer who can't sit in the same room with Fetterman. Now, others can and did offer differing perspectives on the state of his ability to understand conversations, etc. Fair enough, they did that. But in the end, voters should be able to decide how much they think it should matter. Fetterman's wife, who's essentially been her husband's surrogate on the campaign trail as he's been recovering from his stroke, is making a calculated decision to go after NBC as if they're the problem and Fetterman is the victim. But I'm not sure it's a smart strategy. I mean, the days of FDR forbidding the media from photographing his wheelchair are long over. Joining me now is John Ziegler, host of the new podcast, The Death of Journalism, and former senior columnist at Mediaite.com. John, welcome back to the show. Appreciate it. I mean, first of all, from a strategic point of view, I'm surprised that Giselle Fetterman, who has been effectively leading the campaign, thinks that this is a good political issue for them to be accusing the media of being ableist. Dan, first of all, I agree with you on that, and I'm glad that you're addressing this incredibly important issue because I think this entire topic is a mortal threat to what is left of journalism. Strategically, what this does is draw more attention to the problem that Fetterman has yep. with regard to communication. Plus, it seems like whining 
But I believe that the left cannot help themselves in this situation. They have come to believe, not without some rationale, that the mainstream news media works for them. <laughs> After all, Dan, we live in a world where the New York Times will routinely change a headline if the woke Twitter mob raises enough outrage quickly enough to force them to do so. Let me and the reason why... Go ahead. And they're just to finish that thought, the reason why that happens is that media outlets are now deathly afraid of offending their customer base, not even their fan base, their customer base. And when we live in this fragmented media age but, now, it, it, it is incredibly dangerous to what's left of journalism. Look, it, I, I want to focus, we focused on the media previously because that was sort of last week's story. To me, this week's story, and you bring up a fair point, is you know, by, by Giselle Fetterman making these comments, she's leading us to do another segment on this. I mean, the reason I'm doing a follow-up segment on this is because now Giselle Fetterman is making comments about it, which, I, again, I don't understand why they think it's good politics. But let me read you. This is from, you mentioned the New York Times. This is from an op-ed guest essay by David Perry titled, Why That John Fetterman Interview Caused a Furor. Her comments suggest that certain kinds of accommodation are illegitimate. Would Mrs. Burns have made a similar remark if a wheelchair user couldn't get around without a wheelchair? Are you wearing contacts or glasses to read this essay? It is our accommodations, often but not exclusively technological in nature, that make it possible for many of us to do our jobs. This is no less true for politicians than it is for the rest of us. But it doesn't necessarily seem like a fair comparison. It's not a fair comparison. Let me make a much better comparison, and I'll prove the utter hypocrisy of the left on this. Dan, can you imagine for a second if NBC had done an interview with Herschel Walker, the Republican candidate for Senate in Georgia, who the left loves to call dumb, uh, and that's on a good day. And, and he was unable to understand basic questions leading up to an interview that he had to do with a computer using closed captioning. Not only would there be zero criticism of that reporter, that reporter would have a right. ticker tape parade for them, <laughs> uh, the likes of which hasn't been seen since Katie Couric supposedly exposed well, Sarah Palin in the 2008 but, election. But wait, but, but they would say the difference is this is a medical condition, right? That would be the argument. That's the difference, right? <laughs> Well, well, there are those who will say that Herschel Walker has medical problems because of his football career and concussions. I don't know that that's true or not. I happen to be a fan of Herschel Walker. I'm not a fan of either candidate in Pennsylvania being a never Trump conservative. But I think what happened with NBC was perfectly appropriate. And the fact that they have to be, you could tell the reporter was actually embarrassed that she had to feel forced to tell the truth about what she saw. You could hear it in her voice. She knew she was going to get that kind of a reaction. And that is not the atmosphere where real journalism can survive, Dan. Yeah. And, and Lawrence O'Donnell, MSNBC, said, I have a confession to make. I used a teleprompter in this interview last night. The truth is I'm not able to do my show without a teleprompter. Um, again, the suggestion that that's somehow comparable to answering questions. No, it, that's not comparable, yeah. and, I'm, and I'm really glad you pointed out because this is a really important issue. John Ziegler, good to see you. Thanks for coming back. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.